Well, hello everyone. This is Robert from Black Belt Gaming. I just thought I would give you another update and then cover a bit more of, of some of the components for the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay game. Um, many of you knew that my father-in-law was very ill and in the hospital. He did indeed pass away and we've been quite busy with uh, funerals and visitation and family and friends coming in and so uh, I apologize my channel hasn't been a bit more active uh, recently but uh, I am looking forward to doing some more playthroughs with you very soon still due to the current uh, situation I think it might be best for me to do some uh, content that uh, won't break a game up in the middle. I think if I continue to share with you a bit of rules here and there, maybe show some components off for some of the different games I'm planning to play, I think that'll be good for me to do here for a little while. And then uh, as, as things begin to, to settle and as the family gets back into its regular routine, I think I'll be ready to to do another extensive uh, playthrough with you of some of the games that I showcased before uh, here on my channel before I went to the United States. Well, welcome back to the uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Uh, this is Robert continuing to try to learn this game. I picked up the core set, which came in a big box with a lot of components. And in my last video, I discussed sort of the basic mechanic revolving around the, the different dice. And what we're going to do at this time is take a look at some of the action cards and see how it works in combination with the dice. So it helps us read the dice and understand just how our efforts to do something uh, played out. Well, here is an action card I kind of pulled from the deck at random. This would be used in a situation where you're trying to influence uh, your target by uh, persuading them, charming them. It's a non-magical situation. It's actually a social action. So if we take a look at the card, and once again, please understand I'm coming at this from someone who is reading over the rules and trying to learn the game. Uh, up at the top, we have the name of the action. And from what I understand, this is something that comes into play once the action has been completed and it was successful. That's a, a, actually a recharge counter. Um, once you complete an action, you put these little tokens on the card and at the end of each of your turns you remove one of those tokens and then once all the tokens are gone uh, you can perform this action again. So uh, let's take a look at this. Honeyed words. We're talking about a, a social action here that uses uh, the guile skill which uh, is connected to the fellowship ability and this is against your target's intuition uh, skill which is connected to their intelligence. So that sort of lets you know what you're what you're doing. This is an opposed action. I think this is uh, letting you know what conditions or what prerequisites are, are necessary. So the target can hear and understand you. So they've got to be able to to hear your honey, honeyed words before uh, you can attempt to do this. The effect basically explains that you influence the target by telling him exactly what he wants to hear. If appropriate, you can sway the target toward a reasonable argument or convince the target to agree to a reasonable request. The green color at the top represents a rather uh, conservative and careful approach. So you're trying not to be too reckless and uh, 
and hasty in what you're doing. So this is more of a careful approach. And let's let's uh, first think about what kind of dice pool. Last time we talked about putting dice pools together. What we would do is uh, remember we would get the blue dice together that would be connected to our fellowship score. So if it was a four or something, why don't we just put some of those together? One, two, three, four. You know, maybe this is something we're, we're decent at doing. And then uh, let's say we do have training in um, the guile skill. And if that were true, we would add one of these expertise dice to represent our, our training. Sometimes up here on an action card, there might be a modifier. You might see a symbol or something of, of other dice that you need to include in here that uh, make it, well, it's usually more difficult, but um, this one doesn't have a modifier there, so we, that's our basic uh, die pool so far. And uh, then we would have to take into account the target's uh, intelligence and intuition. And just for the, uh, let, let's say their intelligence was, was three. And that's uh, less than our fellowship of four. So look, we're just going to add one of these challenge die uh, into our, our pool. So we would roll those dice when we attempted an action like this, unless there were any other modifiers to take into account. But here's what the results would mean. If in the end you, you counted everything up and you ended up with at least one success, a Warhammer, then your action is successful. If you happen to roll uh, two of these, um, I believe they were called boons, if, the, if two of those came up in your roll, it would actually be a little bonus to you. It says, while this card is recharging, you may add, and you see a white square. Well, that's representing a fortune die. You would add one of these to all social actions involving the target. So as you continue to try to talk and maybe persuade or manipulate the target, you get a little edge, you have a little bonus uh, because of the boons you earned in this roll. If anything uh, in the roll went south, you know, kind of went bad and you ended up with uh, some of these banes in your roll, you're really trying hard and you kind of get stressed out. So your character would suffer one stress damage. But other than that, not too bad. So this is rather a safe, a safe approach. Now, on the back of these action cards, you have a more reckless or aggressive uh, kind of, of take. So it's still called Honeyed Words. It's still the same as you go down. But some of these uh, effects are changing a little bit. Um, you know, over here, we said you influence the target. Well, over here, it just comes straight out and says that when you're real aggressive in what you're doing, you lie to your target a lot. <laughs> if fooled, you can sway the target towards your side of the story or convince him to agree to a reasonable request. So if we get a success, then the action is successful. That's great. If we get those boons again, you need two of them. Uh, while this card is recharging, you may add the fortune die to all social actions. Uh, so that's good. But if you get the banes, it changes a little bit. You saw over here on the conservative side that you suffer one stress, but that was about it. Over here, maybe you kind of... Uh, overplayed your hand so to speak and and while this card is recharging you have to add 
a misfortune die, which is one of these black ones, to all social actions involving the target. So you've really turned them off. Uh, they're not inclined to believe a lot that you're saying. So you've now got something that's working against you. So depending upon your approach, and sometimes these approaches are based on the different character uh, careers that you've chosen, the results will change as well. So sometimes, uh, uh, like I said, sometimes the conservative approach is the best for a particular action. Other times being very aggressive might be the better way to go. And that can vary from character to character and situation and situation depending upon how you want to uh, uh, approach it. Well, now that we've talked about the card and what kind of possible results we may have, uh, maybe we should do a sample roll. This first roll I think I'm going to use just the characteristic dice here and basically assume that I'm in a uh, neutral stance. I'm not being too conservative, I'm not being too aggressive, so I'm just going to use the blue dice. I believe as you move up and da uh, down on a stance meter, which is something I'll show you later, I believe you can begin changing out these dice to the green and the red dice that I showed before. But let's just take a basic uh, roll here. We've got a bit of training in, in guile, we've got our, our fellowship at four, and we've, we've um, uh, our characteristic is higher than the opposition, so we're going to add one challenge die and there are really no other modifiers at this time. So let's let's roll the dice and take a look and see what kind of results we would get. Got three blanks, four blanks, one success, and one uh, cancellation. So that actually is going to wipe it clean, and that would indicate a basic failure at that attempt because we did not achieve any success. We need at least one success to show that the action was uh, successful. One Warhammer to indicate that the action was successful. So that would be a failure. Well, let's try again. Uh, here we have two Warhammers, three Warhammers. We have a Chaos Star and uh, two boons. Now, I need to remind myself exactly how the Chaos Star will work. On the back of the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay rulebook, you'll actually see that it lists the different uh, die results and what they mean. And what we have now with a Chaos Star is that if there are no eligible effects, then it counts as a Bane. So what we would do there is this Bane would cancel one of the boons. So those are removed. One boon, that's not high enough to trigger anything on this particular card. So that's not going to do anything right now. But we have three successes. So our action was definitely uh, successful. Now, what if I were, what if I were to take a more aggressive approach and replace? Let's say I was a couple of steps down into the uh, uh, reckless stance, and I took a couple of the red dice here, and then I decided it was time to attempt to lie to the target and get them to do what I wanted them to do following the same die pool other than the exchange there what do we have we've got three successes we got these two blanks let's take them out and we've got one here that will cancel uh, one of these 
So I see here that uh, this one indicates that uh, I've suffered some stress. Let's take a look back at our reference sheet to make sure. It's basically exertion. Um, so if it's a um, mental task, this, which this is, uh, that would be one stress. So um, as I understand the rules, I think I can have this cancel one of these. So maybe I can remove that one. And we have two successes there. And there you have it. We were uh, successful with our action. Now, what if, what if my character was a bit more uh, conservative and cautious? We could use the green dice to replace the other two blue dice. And we would roll, and we would have two boons, one success, one success with a plus, with blank, and two cancellations. But, I believe as we saw with the uh, characteristic, uh, I'm sorry, the results here, this is a righteous success, and that means that um, we get to roll an additional die of the same type, and any results from the additional die are added to the results of the pool. So let's pull out another... Um, yellow die and roll it and we got another boon so that's three boons but it looks like our successes are canceled we have the two uh, crossed swords here along with the two hammers so those are all wiped out and we're just left with three boons does that do anything it, yes it does it says while this card is recharging you may add a fortune die to all social actions involving the target. So, we end up with a small edge there uh, to help us out in, in further dealings with the target. But, um, we didn't exactly succeed with persuading them to do what we want them to do. But maybe we buttered him up a little bit and uh, maybe the target is a bit more likely to, uh, to listen to us as we, as we uh, try something else. So uh, those are the basics of, of how some of these actions cards, art cards will work. And I think what I need to do next is take uh, a closer look at the conservative and aggressive stances and maybe take a peek at the character sheet and some of the careers. And I think that's what we'll do next. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.